Glory to God. All of you all, blessings to you. All my partners, thank you so much. As you're joining in, share this broadcast. Say, Lord, I received the prophet's reward. This is going to be powerful. Night church tonight. And it's going to be a powerful Bible study unto you. And those of you all that are, um, that you sow into the ministry, thank you so much. Thank you for praying for the ministry, sowing into the ministry, listening to all the videos we do daily and sharing the broadcast. Thank you so much. Those of you all that are uh, sowing, remember we are not using text by give. So do not text your seed. Uh, that's number one. Don't text your seed. No texting. Cash app is prop, dollar sign Prophet Joshua Holmes. P.O. Box 797901, Dallas, Texas. And you get the zip code, I think is on my page. And also remember PayPal, Prophet Holmes at AOL.com. And you can sow cash via the mail. And those of you all that are um, getting messages from people asking you for money in your inbox, that's not me. Understand that the ministry have a lot of fake accounts, so don't get offended. I'm not a beggar. I'm soul. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So all of you are blessings to you. But anyhow, it's good to see everybody. Share this broadcast as you're joining in. This is going to be a powerful broadcast. What will you do with the wealth and health power that God has given to you? What will you do with the wealth and health power that God has given to you. What will you do with it? What will you do with it? What will you do with it? Because that power is unlimited and is right there for you to take your life into pleasure that is scheduled by God. It's pleasure that's scheduled by God. Uh, Psalm chapter 16 said that his pleasures are at his right hand forevermore. And so the Lord has reserved a encounter constantly in your spirit so that you can enjoy the abundant life. Enjoy the abundant life. Let's look at Psalm 16, verse 11. It says, thou will show me the path of life. Thou will show me the path of life and in your presence is fullness of joy. And at your right hand, our pleasures for forevermore. That's Psalm 16, verse 11. Now, saints, I want you to think about that. Look what the Bible says here. It says that thou will show me the path of life. So the Holy Spirit gonna show you the path where this fullness of joy is and also where the pleasures forevermore is. It's not just gonna come to you automatically. It's a path. You see this? So there's a path that the Holy Spirit going to have to reveal to you that you're going to have to activate, make decisions, make choices, and walk in that path. And in that path is the pleasures forevermore. In that path is all the joy in all of its fullness. Now, since the, 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 the power of the fullness of joy is special because the Lord is revealing to you that joy has levels to it that you could have a measure of joy and not be in the fullness of joy. So that's shocking and that's almost scary too because you can live your whole life at the halfness of joy or the most of joy, but not the fullness. That means that there were certain things that you had dominion to control, to activate, to loose, to enjoy, and you never enjoyed it. Now that's scary. You don't want to find yourself in that predicament that the fullness of joy was never obtained by you and it was there. So you have to tune in and sanctify yourself so that the Lord could reveal to you every aspect of what he wants you to have, your whole inheritance. Now, saints, the thing about it is this. There were people in the word of God that lived in the fullness of joy. We see Abraham, we see Isaac, we see Jacob, we see Solomon. All of them lived in the fullness of joy. 
they all were unlocking the fullness of what the Lord had for them. So they were wealthy, they were healthy, and they were experiencing the power that God had given to them in the earth. Now you have that same power underneath this new covenant. Now for you, you have the power of the Holy Spirit, the presence of God, the wisdom of God, the understanding of the Lord, so that you can keep on accessing favor, so that you can keep on going to new heights. And then Hebrews chapter one lets you know that you have ministering spirits so you could talk your way into supernatural activity. Ministering spirits are proof that you have a commander inside of you, a commander, a demander. So a lot of times, if you don't activate the commander and the demander, you're going to be praying to God as if he holding back something from you, as if he's doing you wrong. And, and that's how the enemy gets placed. If you ever operate in a place like where you're saying, Lord, why don't you do this? There's, there's authority inside of you for you to do it as well. You are partake of his divine nature. You're working with him. You see what I'm saying? So as a, as a, as a partnership, you tag teaming with God. So you can find yourself saying, Lord, I need you to do this. I need you to do this. And the Lord say, I've given you power to do that yourself. Now, saints, your wealth and health is not in God's control. Your wealth and health is not in God's control. Your wealth and health is in your control. That's your responsibility. So the Holy Spirit is not responsible to just automatically grant you health and wealth. All that stuff is in your jurisdiction. You have the power, although, to walk in both of these, health and wealth. And you have to become more determined. You have to become more focused and more vigilant. And you got to be violent in your your expectation, meaning that you can't allow yourself to uh, be shaky. Remember what James chapter one say, a double-minded man, I think James chapter one, verse six, it says that he's unstable in all his ways, but also let that man not expect anything from the Lord. Even he can receive wisdom. And John, uh, James chapter one, verse five, I believe says, the Lord gives wisdom freely. James chapter one, I think is verse five. He gives wisdom freely. So imagine if he gives wisdom freely and it says that you're double-minded, don't think that you'll receive anything from the Lord. That's even the things that he give freely. So there's things that God gives freely that if you are not established in, in your double-minded, you're never going to receive it. Now, Psalm 112 talked about a man with an established heart. It says that he's not afraid of evil tidings. Uh, that's Psalm 112. The importance of that text means that bad news do not sway you. It doesn't bother you. It doesn't have a grip on you, which is so important. If bad news can harass you, it could take you out of faith. It could take you out of miracles. It could take you out of favor and it can take you out of the manifestation of the spirit. So you have to establish your heart before fiery darts come. Also remember, I think uh, it was Apostle Paul that was talking about when the fiery darts come, the only way that you can quench it is by the shield of faith. It says that the shield of faith can quench the fiery darts of the enemy, which is so important because if you have the shield of faith, that means that you can shut down Satan's power. You can shut down Satan's power to operate in, in, in the devices that Satan will throw at you. Now, saints, one of the major two places that Satan attacks you is through your wealth and your health. Because both of these areas, God created them so that you can have a tangible experience with him. Wealth is a tangible experience with God. You can see the abundance that he gives you. You can see how he favors you. You can see how he provides for you in a more bountiful manner. Um, uh, those of you are, please focus on him. I don't, I don't, let's, uh, let's focus with my word. Let's focus with my word. Focus on my word. Focus on my word. Um, Stay focused on this word, word, word. Come on. 
I want you to listen to the word. Let's listen to the word. And so these are two avenues that is tangible, tangible. The tangibility of God is in the health and the wealth. You can feel God through your body. That's why I said taste and see that the Lord is good. Tasting and seeing are both sensual systems is, is senses that's in the flesh, in the body. You taste with your, 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 your body. You see with your body according to, you know, you have eyes and you have, you know, so a mouth. So when we deal with the taste and see, it shows you that there's tangible aspects. Now, Deuteronomy chapter eight, verse 18 says, you will remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. Now, saints, I want you to catch this. Then at the end of that, it says that he may establish the covenant that he swore to your fathers, even as it is this day. Now, saints, that last part is so important because you always hear, remember the Lord thy God is he that gives you power to get wealth. But... Look what it says, the purpose, why you should remember the Lord thy God, that he may establish his covenant, that he may establish his covenant that he swore to your fathers. It didn't say your father. It said your fathers. It means that there was more than one father that God told them that he was going to make you rich. He was going to bless you in the city, bless you in the field. He was going to make you fruitful and multiply you that you, you were going to be their offspring and you was going to have results, manifestation. You was going to have increase. So watch this, people of God. Imagine if you live your life without wealth and health and you never achieve it. Well, you have divine rights to achieve it. So, so don't, don't settle. And even when you get to wealth and health, there's still another dimension because the Lord is always thinking about overflow and abundance. He's always thinking about showing you the height and the depths of a certain thing, a certain department, a certain river, a certain ability that he has. So the Lord never wanted just to take you into the outer court of wealth, but then there's the inner court of wealth. And then there's the holy of holies of wealth. There's not only the outer court of health, but then there's the inner court of health. And there's the holy of holies of health. And so every single aspect that the Lord has a department of, there are depths and rivers to it. You see, Elisha had told Naaman to dip in the Jordan seven times. That means that the Jordan had seven elements. The Jordan had seven aspects seven graces, seven glories. And there was more to the Jordan than that, but all he needed was seven. He needed to step into the seven realms of that Jordan. See, everything that God has, it has increased to it. So the Lord is a provider, but he provides for you so greatly that we now we experience a word called rich. So look at Genesis chapter 13, verse two. It says Abraham was very rich. That means that he experienced provision in its depths because before it was riches, it was provision. The Lord had provided for him, but he kept on exploring the provisional power of God. So that's how we step into words called wealth and riches. Psalm 112 says, if, if you fear the Lord, you delight in his commandments and you do his commandments, it says wealth and riches shall be in your house. Now that's very important because it's dealing with the aspect that you're going to experience the Lord God providing for you, but it's going to be the depths of his provision, the heights of his provision, and the, the intensity of his provision. That's why it's called wealth and riches. And it says it's going to be in your house. It didn't say it's going to be in the world's house. It didn't say it was going to be in the sinner's house. It says it's going to be in your house meaning that God is going to strategically target you with overflow. The Lord is going to strategically target you with provision, with riches, with money. See, God wants to give you money that doesn't have any restraint, riches that does not have any restraint. You know why? 
because you're operating in self-restraint. See, when you operate in self-restraint to leave the world and operate by the kingdom system, then God wants to give you money, health, provision that has no restraint. Huh? Huh? When he see that you're operating in self-restraint, then he wants to give you riches, wealth, money, health, provision without restraint. See, your self-restraint causes God to become unrestrained in blessing you. Your self-restraint causes God to become um, um, unrestrained in giving you health. There's plenty of health and plenty of wealth reserved for you. That word reserved is so important because before you can get what's reserved, you have to serve. There's a servanthood that unlocks wealth and health. You have to minister to God. And so King Jesus paid for you. We see the stripes. He paid for you to have health. The stripes was the payment. He paid for you to have wealth and riches. His body uh, being crucified and the blood being shed, 2 Corinthians 8, 9, let you know that he became the poverty, that through, through his poverty, you might be made rich. So he paid for you to be made rich. That means that financially, you're going to experience miracles to give you back your dignity. See, a financial miracle is to give you back your dignity. Because um, the more, the less you have, the more Satan could use that less and try to embarrass you like you're nobody, even though we know that you are somebody. But see, Satan, the accuser of the breth brethren is petty. And, and Satan is a thief. And Satan loves the idea of seeing you live your whole life with, with uh, being a slave to his theft, his uh, robbery. See, Satan has pleasure in seeing you never prosper, seeing you never step into health, seeing you never step into wealth because Satan feels like, ha, 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 I have some stuff that really belongs to them that's theirs, but I'm gonna keep occupying it until they wake up and work the kingdom system. See, as long as you're, you're not sowing and you're not reaping, then Satan still thinks that uh, Satan is successful in robbing you. And see, there's something called satanic prosperity. That means, uh, that means that Satan is successful over you in wars and battles. That means that there's some things that Satan gonna fight you on and he's actually gonna win the battle. Saints, do you know that even though you have knowledge that Satan is defeated, Satan can still defeat you? And see, if you never step into life and life more abundantly, Satan has defeated you in this life. But those days are gone forever. As you're listening to me, there's another anointing, another river, another glory that you're stepping into right now to start taking a hold of the blood covenant and this New Testament grace and glory that has been given to you. Psalm 84 says that he gives grace and glory. No, with, no good thing will he withhold from you that walk uprightly. So that means that when you're walking upright, see, being upright and being uptight. When you're uptight, you're too stubborn. You don't listen to God. When you're uptight, you try to save your life. You try to make sure you create your own security. That's what it means to be uptight. But when you're up, when you're upright, you lose your life. You lay down your life, meaning you start walking in discipline, self-control, stewardship, righteousness. You start moving in sowing. You start moving in serving. You start moving in submission. You start moving in saying and decreeing things and speaking the goodness of God into your atmosphere, into your path, into your day. And see, there's creative miracle money anointings, money mantles. There's creative miracle money mantles. We see the children of Israel, they came out with their silver and gold. That's a creative money miracle mantle. That's a miracle money mantle. And that's creative because remember, they went go borrow, but they ended up taking possession of the, the money and the provision that was in uh, Egypt. So they took a hold of that. That was their wealth. That was their prosperity, and that was their inheritance. 
but they, they got that by a supernatural transference. Wealth transference is a part of the born again lifestyle. So when, when you are born again, you give your life to King Jesus and you walk in this walk with him, the spirit of the Lord is going to start showing you all of the benefits that you have. How does the spirit of God really show you the benefits? He's going to send you an apostle. He's going to send you a prophet. Because an apostle and a prophet is someone that overcomes the gates of hell and they are living witnesses of what they're preaching. See, somebody might come on here and start trying to slander me, right? And talk about what I have, right? But see, I'm evidence. Um, see, I'm a living testimony. You can look at me and see that this not fraudulent for me. I couldn't listen to somebody that's telling me about something that they don't have no knowledge or experience with, and they're telling me that they're rebuking me and teaching me how to unlock it, and they haven't unlocked it. That would that that seem very oxymoron. That that's that seemed very um, ludicrous. How could I talk to you about the blessing of God if I'm not a blessed man? So I'm blessed. You can see it visibly. You can see it uh, verbally. You can see it in my fruits. I have the fruits of what I'm teaching to you. So some people may try to slander me for, for how I look or for what I have, but I'm evidence of the word. If I didn't have these things, then it would be hypocrisy for me to even label myself as a teacher of these things. And see, I don't mind people. Some people get offended when people call them a prosperity teacher. I don't mind you calling me a prosperity teacher because I am a teacher of prosperity because I'm a prophet. And if you believe the prophet, you shall prosper. So I'm a false prophet if I don't teach you how to prosper. And that's what are the results of believing a prophet. So that, that would be real crazy, right? If I don't teach you prosperity, but I say I'm a prophet. Well, I'm lying to you because if you believe me, you're going to prosper. So how am I going to withhold you learning something that is the result of you believing me? And so a prophet going to come teach you about abundance. A prophet going to teach you about wealth because this whole lifestyle is not about sin and falling short. You live that type of life when you average, but when you become supernatural and set free, who the son set free is free indeed. Now you start dealing with inheritance. As long as you keep dealing with sin and I'll keep on falling short, you still underneath the deception of the enemy. When you start realizing your inheritance, your covenant, your power, your dominion, the grace and the glory that's given to you. Now you can get to the finer things in life, the better things in life, this new and better covenant. You see what I'm saying? That's better than falling short to sin. Now, saints, I got to deal with that as well for just about 30 seconds here. Is sin the reason why you even can condemn yourself and think that you're not worthy to step into health and wealth? Because all the devil is going to do, once you get knowledge that something belongs to you, is try to make you feel insecure about your qualification to have it. So Satan will magnify to you, you got to stay sick. You got to have pain. You got to have diseases because you did wrong. Now, you have to understand when you're forgiven and the blood of Jesus has cleansed you from all unrighteousness, the Bible says. Now you have divine authority to take health, even though Satan may try to use um, old acts that you have done and try to use that against you to weaken your faith, weaken your expectation. But you have power, remember, to bind the enemy. And sometimes um, you can hear so much jokes about binding. You can hear so much casual talk about binding that you forget that binding is a divine ability inside of you that when you bind on earth, it is bound in heaven. So whatever demonic force is moving into heavenly places against your health, you can bind them. Uh, Self-condemnation is a spiritual strategy from Satan to make you feel inadequate to have plenty of money and plenty of health. Self-condemnation. 
When you are a sower, do not let other people's giving and their level of giving frustrate the ability that God has given you to give. You have to sow at the level that you're at and the Lord going to keep on increasing you. So say like you, you watch somebody, they're sowing $1,000, they're sowing $500 and they're honoring the work of God. They're honoring their man of God. And you say, well, I don't got that much. No, you sow the best of where you're at. You see what I'm saying? Because if you have one talent, the one can become another one. The two talent, the two can become another two. The five talent, the five can become another five. If the enemy can get you into condemnation, the enemy can also stop the divine weapon that you're using. Because once your mind go into the overload of feeling insecure and you start condemning yourself, you're actually falling into the trap to lose the power to do that, which God is having you do. So watch this. You know what Satan does? Say somebody prays four hours and you're only praying 10 minutes. What the enemy will magnify that they're praying four hours to you so that while you're praying 10 minutes, you can feel like it's not effective. And then the minute that you start condemning yourself, condemnation, when it's full, it produces retirement of a spiritual activity. I'm gonna say this again. Uh, condemnation, when it is full, it produces the retirement of a spiritual ability or, or a spiritual activity rather. So here's what the enemy does. The enemy will have you compare yourself to other people, what they're doing spiritually. The minute you start condemning yourself, guess what starts to happen? Now you're losing the power to actually do what you was already doing. And now you find yourself dropping out of the race. Now you actually can't even do it now. You was doing something spiritual and the enemy, all he had to do was just exalt somebody else's spiritual activity above yours, make you feel inadequate. Now you don't even do what you was doing because that comparison broke the anointing. Saints, remember it was Cain that started condemning himself, started looking at what Abel was sowing and Abel's results and Abel's harvest. And now... Cain is in the bracket of trying to stop the seed and even stop the sower, Abel. You see what I'm saying? Now he's trying to kill Abel because he don't want to see the seed being sown. That's a satanic device. Sowing has to be something that you do out of grace because law will not sustain you. If you try to sow out of law, anything that you try to do out of law, you lose the power to do it. So uh, that's why if children, say children, like they're not exposed to a lot of stuff growing up. That's why when like they grow up, like they be, boy, they be, they be having baby after baby. They be with everybody. They be in five, 10 relationships constantly. They be bouncing all over the place because um, that law did not birth the right character. It, it, it seemed like it was too hard. See, law actually makes things look harder than it is. Are you seeing this? When you operate in law, Satan can frustrate the grace of God on your life and make things look like it's impossible. So people try to stop smoking out of law. Law not powerful enough to stop smoking. Law not powerful enough for you to stop lying or for you to stop stealing or for you to stop being depressed. Grace is going to make the, the power to do it easy, accessible, and real. It's going to become a reality to you. You see what I'm saying? So you have to keep sowing seed as a grace. Now, you're not going to get into heaven without sowing because even Galatians chapter six, for eight, verse eight says, I think Galatians six, eight, it says that if you sow to the flesh, you're of the flesh reap corruption. 
Do you know how you sow to your flesh? You sow to your flesh by being distracted, by being offended, by being discouraged, by being curious. See, these are all ways that Satan gets you to sow to your flesh. Think about this. Distraction, discouragement, um, uh, being offended, being curious. All the woman did in Gen Genesis was be curious. While she was being curious, it made her listen more to the serpent. It made her explore the serpent's suggestions, conversation, and then it made her explore the act of sin. All of that came through curiosity. And so these are satanic devices that I'm exposing to you. So I want you to remember this. And so when Satan, Satan is using a satanic device against you, he's going to uh, be the puppet master of what we call distraction, discouragement. And then we deal with that other aspect of um, offense. When you get offended, your mind go to a certain place that it wasn't before. That's why they was following King Jesus. And as soon as he said, eat of my flesh, drink of my blood, the Bible said that there were some disciples that no longer followed him. They didn't understand that Satan had tricked them, that they were deceived. You see what I'm saying? At the time, that was their discernment. But, but imagine Satan was giving them discernment against the son of God. As he was doing then, he still does today. So... They walk with the Lord for a time and Satan used that satanic device of offense to get them into the aspect of uh, backsliding, disconnection, losing the power of relationship with God Almighty through his son. The thing about it is this, that offense took them to a place that they did not see weeks ago. You see what I'm saying? So a lot of times, children of God, when you're following your man of God, when you're following your apostle, your prophet, your leader, your teacher, you have to pre-plan to walk in the spirit because Satan could have you excited, joyful, listening to the man of God. As soon as you get offended, you're no longer in the same place because our fence is a portal to deceptive thoughts. And, and then, then, then you stupid. Because <laughs> guess what? The man of God going to keep on going. The man of God going to keep on. If, if that's really a man of God, he's still going to keep on being successful. But now you lose your place. You lose your rank. You lose what the man of God had for you. And it's not like it's impossible for you ever to get it. But now you got to wait longer. And delays are demonic if God is giving you instructions to stop the delay. You see what I'm saying? Delays are demonic if God is giving you instructions to stop the delay. So why am I going to be delayed when God is showing me the path not to be delayed? When you are sowing, you have to do it out of grace. Galatians 6, 8, sow to the flesh, you're of the flesh, reap corruption. Sow to the spirit, you're of the spirit, reap everlasting life. Now, saints, remember what it says, if you sow to the spirit, you're of the spirit, reap everlasting life. Now, everlasting life, think about this. Everlasting life is to sow into the spirit. What do you do when you sow to the spirit? You invest your time into the Lord, studying his word, meditating the word, speaking the word to yourself. When you prophesy the word to yourself is an equation for joy. When you prophesy the word to yourself, it's an equation for excitement, hope, peace. You activate the presence of God tangibly when you're speaking the word to yourself, not as a law, but as a grace. Because I done explained to you, whenever you do stuff as laws, it loses its effectiveness. You're no longer investing your passion into it. That's why you can become a sower and you start sowing out a law, and now the sowing don't got no excitement. Because you start becoming lukewarm and start thinking, okay, this all I'm going to get back in return. When the Lord will actually test you, have you sow 
and feel like the bread for food that you're receiving is at the same level when really God just about to shock you with a level of bread that you never experienced before. What am I talking about? Second Corinthians chapter nine. Second Corinthians chapter nine said he ministered of seed to the soul. I think second Corinthians nine, 10, uh, nine, 10, I believe. Uh, nine, chapter nine, verse eight through 10. It says that he ministered seed to the sower and he ministered bread for food and he multiplied your seed sown. When you are sower, the Lord going to make sure he give you bread for your food. Sometimes that bread will seem like it's a budget. It's at a set amount, but it's a test because when he giving you bread for food, uh, you could easily become lukewarm and get in cruise control and think this is all God going to give me bread for food until I get to my big harvest. But the bread for food can increase. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The bread for food is the Lord sustaining you until the big harvest come. Everybody has a pay day in the Lord, especially when you're paying the Lord with your tithes your offerings, your seed sowing into your one man of God. God always going to send you a teacher to teach you the word. Your teacher of the word is rich soil, rich soil, rich soil. So they are soil that make you rich, meaning every dimension of God start to increase inside of you. Your wisdom, your knowledge, your truthfulness, your liberty, your virtue as a woman, your kingship as a man, uh, Revelation chapter one, verse five and eight, uh, ver verse five and six says that he has made you kings and priests by his blood. He has washed you from sin. He has made you kings and priests. So all those qualities of God start becoming rich and your finances is the visibility of those riches. That's going to occur while you're sowing into your teacher. Now, the Lord don't frustrate the grace of sowing. He give you one saw, one teacher, one all that you sow into. If you look at the word saw, you take the S out, you get the word all. Because your saw is where the all is being imparted to you, added on to you. You're multiplying in grace and glory and power through that one saw. You take the S out of saw, you get the word all. Because the all of God is hidden in your saw. So there's certain things that the Lord wants you to know, learn, experience. And there's certain things that the father wants you to function in that he's going to hide it inside of your soul, which is your teacher, which is your prophet Joshua Holmes, which is your man of God that's teaching you. So he hides that inside of the soul. So imagine some people are struggling because they won't tap into their soul. Their soul has the prescribed all for their struggle, for their weakness, for their bad habits, for their poverty, for their uh, sickness. See, the woman with the alabaster box was stepping into her soul. She was tapping into her soul. So when she tapped into her soul, she took that alabaster box and started sowing that large money at that alabaster box into King Jesus, because this was her man of God on earth. This was her teacher, but she detected it via the spirit. See, the spirit won't let you miss. The more you're led by the spirit, the spirit going to show you who your soul is, your teacher, your apostle, your prophet, your evangelist, who, who is a soul winner, winning your soul, because you are soul. See, your man of God is evangelistic because he wins your soul. He gets your soul to accomplish new dimensions in the spirit, new ways of thinking, new ways of operation, new ways of meditation, new ways of functionality. Your soul is so powerful because God hides himself in your soul and as your soul. If you take a note, write that down. God hides himself in your soul and as your soul. So your soul is not only carrying God, it is God. He disguises himself in the flesh of your soul. See, King Jesus was God in the flesh. Huh? 
King Jesus was God in the flesh. When that woman was sewing into this man that looks similar to her, when I say similar to her, he has eyes, he has ears, he has a fleshly body. But this was God Almighty in a flesh and blood. He's still doing that today all the time. God appears to you with a human body all the time. And when the great God Jehovah is showing up to you, he going to teach you his word. Yes, his spirit going to be inside of you. But there's a realm of the spirit being inside of you that a lot of people don't teach. The spirit be inside of you so that you can discern who the spirit is inside of to play the Lord Jesus to your life. Because the woman as Zarephath, Elijah was playing Jesus to her. He was her deliverer. If she didn't listen to Elijah, she was going to have that last meal. Her and her son was going to die. And what Satan wanted to accomplish was going to happen. Moses was playing Jesus to the children of Israel. Melchizedek was playing Jesus to um, Abraham. Uh, Joshua was playing Jesus to the children of Israel to bring them out. Bring them through the walls of Jericho. Bring them through uh, AI. Bring them through, and I'm not talking about Alan Iverson. <laughs> bring them through all the different wars and battles they was going to face. Solomon was playing Jesus to the queen of Sheba. That's why even King Jesus used Solomon as a reference. He said, there's a one greater than Solomon here. Why would he use Solomon? That means that Solomon was really great because he said there's one greater. That means that Solomon was great. The great God Jehovah was functioning through Solomon. Glory to God. And so the Lord going to appear to you in this life because how are you going to sow into him? You're going to have to have a man of God. You're going to have to have somebody with a physical body that can receive your seed, that can receive your offering, that can receive your tithe as they go forth ministering the gospel. Your soul will always be an individual that is constantly imparting new revelation into your soul. Your soul will always teach you at a higher dimension than others. Your soul will always have the full picture. They will always have the full scripture and they will rightly divide the word to you. Your soul will always give you joy even in the midst of the hardest seasons of your life. Your soul will bring comfort. They are a manifestation of the Holy Ghost to your life. So even though you might be suffering and going through distress and going through things that are bothering your body, your soul, your spirit, your finances, when you meet your soul, they always going to give you the oil of comfort, the oil of joy, the oil of peace, the oil of recovery. See, your divine soul is all for you to recover all, for you to be restored in your soul because your soul might be wounded, but your soul is glory light. Your apostle is glory light. So they come to bring the healing to your soul. Your soul might be in sin, but they come to break sin's chains. Your, your soul might experience yokes, but your apostle come to break yokes. Your soul might experience depression, but your, your, your soul, your apostle, come to bring you the joy of the Lord that is your strength. Nehemiah, he was, uh, he was an apostolic vessel, Nehemiah, because he understood the joy of the Lord is my strength. He was a builder. So, so I want you to understand that even your apostle, your teacher is a Nehemiah. They're building up your walls around your spirit so that you can guard your heart with all diligence, because out of it flows the issues of life. And so your apostle, your soul, your prophet, your teacher, they have a, uh, they have a Nehemiah assignment to build you up or, or what has been broken down where the enemy can have place in your life, whether it be financially, whether it be mentally, whether it be emotionally, whether it be physically, wherever the enemy has triumphed over you, your apostle, your teacher, your prophet is given to you to break those chains so that you can recover all. See, saints, um, remember what Nathan did to David. David had given place to the devil because David went go kill 
Bathsheba's husband, put him in the front of the battle so he can get shot down and die. And so remember what Nathan did. Nathan came to rebuild back the walls. Huh? Tell him, hey, you that man, you that wicked man that did the wrong thing. You shouldn't have had did that. So, so your prophet comes into your life to start building up your walls in your spirit. Now, saints, remember, there are walls that divide you from your inheritance. And there are walls that protect you so that you can keep your receptivity of your inheritance. There are walls for protection and there's walls for deception. So the walls of Jericho was walls for deception. And so those walls was deceptive because it was blocking out Joshua and the children of Israel from their inheritance, from what belonged to them. So when you see them functioning in what we call rejoicing and they protest around that wall, think about that. The Lord gave them an instruction to protest. The Lord gave them an instruction to do a march around the walls of Jericho and those walls came tumbling down. So those walls was adversarial. Now there are walls that are divine, that are from God, that you're gonna need these walls if you're gonna walk in health and wealth. Because if you don't have these walls, Satan gonna rule over you and trick you and make you look like you're a slave and a victim when really you have power. You have power to be healthy. The Holy Spirit will give you power to have health. The Holy Spirit giveth you power to have wealth. Money cometh, supernatural increase, all type of financial rivers flowing out of your belly and into your hand, flowing out of your belly and into your bank account, flowing out of your belly and into your bosom, rather. Saints, your bosom is not supposed to become dusty. When your bosom becomes dusty, that means that you're not experiencing harvests and you're not reaping. You have to study the, the, the activity that's going on in your bosom after you sow because you're always receiving things when you sow. Remember, your soul is your all. And the, the state of your soul uh, produces the state of your soul when you connect it correctly. I'm gonna say this again. The state of your soul produces the state of your soul the state of your soul produces the state of your soul if you're connected properly. So when, when you're sowing into your apostle, that's why I always tell my people, listen to my videos, follow my teachings, because as you're listening, you're letting the all that's in the soul come to you because you, you, you're supposed to be jump-started to the level that your man of God is at. So there's things that I go through so that you don't have to go through. There's battles that I fight and defeat so that you don't have to defeat the battle. The purpose of God giving you an apostle and a prophet is so that you can have a foundation. Remember, a foundation keeps you from falling. If you move the foundation from underneath the ground, you left to fall into a bottomless pit, which is the realms of the devil. So the apostle, the prophet stops satanic realms from operating in your money, in your mind, in your memory in your movements, your decision-making. And so having an apostle and a prophet makes things a million times easier because they actually making your relationship with the Holy Ghost easier because the Holy Ghost is upon them and has possessed them. See, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach this gospel to you. He has anointed me to set you free, to bring you out of your prison, to bring you into the recovery of sight, to, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord to you, to open up those prison doors that have been holding you captive in your money, in your mind, in your memory, in your movements. See, you are an activator of this divine lifestyle. You was created to be rich. You was created to have wealth. You was created to have health in your body. Nobody can stop you but you. You got to go further than the generation before you. You can't let them determine how you think because their thinking brought them to that level of finances. You can't let the generation before you determine how you act because their actions brought them to that level of health. You see what I'm saying? You have to go further. So saints, the sanctification process, 
that God takes you through is because you were created for more. How are you going to get into more if you stay doing the same thing that got the other generation and the other group of people into the level that they were operating out of? Let the spirit show you a new thing. The spirit will show you a new thing so that you can have new money, new mindsets, new memories, new mantles, new miracles, new multiplication. Huh? The spirit want to give you a new diagnosis in your body. You're not going to have sugar diabetes like that generation. You're not going to have high blood pressure. You're not going to have no cyst in your belly dominating you. You got to take authority over your health now. Stop waiting until you get older in years to start speaking your health covenant. You young people on here, even though you don't feel no pain, you don't feel no issues, start speaking health because the more you prophesy in health, the more the spirit going to draw you into what is of health. The spirit going to show you health decisions. Start speaking your covenant now. Says, I want to say this to you, that when you're speaking money cometh, when you're speaking health cometh and wealth cometh, the Holy Ghost start drawing you into the pathway of those things that you're decreeing. See, decreeing is a supernatural wind in the spirit that blows your body, your mind, and your activities in the direction of what you're saying. So while you're talking health, the wind of the spirit is blowing you into the direction where your health is. When you're talking wealth, the spirit is drawing you into the direction where your wealth is. Every single thing that you're talking about, the Holy Ghost is going to guide you into that truth. You see what I'm saying? So the Lord uses your mouth as a navigator. Your, your mouth is a navigational system. So, so when your mouth is speaking things and your mouth is saying this and that and that and this, now your mouth is linking up with the flow in the direction of the spirit of God and bringing you into what you said. So when you say, uh, by his stripes, I am healed. I receive divine health in my body. You, you don't even understand how much steps you done walk into by talking like that. You are already in the stripes of King Jesus. Now the stripes of King Jesus is around. So, so by his stripes, See, stripes is your neighbor. It's a location in the spirit. It's a geography by his stripes. So the stripes is a geography in the spirit realm. When you operating in, in the healing power of King Jesus, you have the stripes right next to you. Geographically, it's located right next to you. It's in your proximity. See, say something that the Bible said that was power, powerful was that King Jesus was in that conference and the power of the Lord was present to heal. Why wasn't nobody getting healed? They didn't tap into the invisible power. Holy Marco Televosia, Vozuvue, Vele Vuzivian, Vale Vizua Lava. They did not step into the invisible power. See, the reason why a lot of people don't move in the power of God because it's invisible. The only way you could operate in it is via faith, expectation, and imagination. God gave you your imagination so that you could see invisible activity going on around you. And your consciousness, your consciousness, what you become aware of produces manifestations. See, the only people that realize that there was invisible power in the room was those that stepped out of that, that, that roof. They took off the roof and came down. Saints, you notice, for them to step into that invisible power, they had to take off the roof. You got to take the roof off if you're going to experience the invisible power of God. You're going to have to take off all the limitations and all the boundaries and all the what you can't do and all of how it's going to happen. All those questions are roofs. See, there are thoughts that are roofs. There are uh, curse words, words that activate curses. There are words of death, death words. Move from death words and into breath words because the breath of the almighty want to come out of your mouth. 
The breath of the Almighty want to saturate your health. The breath of the Almighty want to saturate your finances, saturate your thought life, saturate your emotions. You have to take the roof off of your expectation because hope deferred make the heart sick. Once your heart gets sick, your body gets sick too. If you let God bring wholeness to your heart and you start walking in this faith life, this supernatural expectation life, this invisible power, even your body got to submit itself to you. Your body has to submit itself to the state of your soul. Your body has to submit itself to the state of your soul. Your body has to submit itself to the state of your thinking. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So if you think in health, you become health. If you're thinking wealth, you become wealth. If you're thinking money cometh, you become money cometh. The spirit is drawing you into the direction of your divine thinking. Your divine words is pushing you in a direction where those divine words are located and manifested and visible and tangible and can be experienced. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. You have to start being a, a ruler over what comes out of your vocabulary, a ruler of what is contemplated in your mind. A ruler, you have to become a ruler. You cannot keep on letting yourself become uh, lukewarm. You have to take it by force. The kingdom of God suffered violence and the violent take it by force. The violence that God is looking for is diligence and dedication, uh, resilience, perseverance. You can't talk yourself out of what God wants you to have. And stop hanging around people that criticize what the Lord promised that you would have in the word. Because if the Lord is, is saying, I'll give you the power to get wealth, and somebody say, oh, it's not about having money. Cut them off. Because that's adversarial to the word. When I say cut them off, you may have to still live inside their house. You see what I'm saying? You may still have to work at the job with them. But I'm saying don't pursue ongoing conversations with them. Because when you do that, now they can corrupt your soul. And when your soul is corrupted, angelic activity can detect when your soul is wounded. Angels cannot move in a broken heart. Because angels... They know that that brokenness comes from the demonic kingdom. Now, I'm not talking about the brokenness of humility that's ready for servanthood, that's ready for God to do a work in your life. I'm talking about that brokenness that comes from demons riding over your head and manipulating you and enslaving you and walking over you and tricking you and deceiving you and trapping you. I'm talking about that 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 is demonic. Angels need to see you operating in dominion. Ministering spirits need to see you operating in faith. They need to see you walking by faith and not by sight. They need to see that dominion manifesting forth. Now, remember I talked about divine walls. Proverbs chapter 25 verse 28 says that he that hath no rule over his spirit is like a city broken down without any walls. It's like a city that's broken down. Now, see, now we see that demonic brokenness. Because it says he that have no rule over his spirit. That means that you have given place to the devil. You have opened up yourself to the satanic realm. Evil spirits are able to dictate your emotions, your thoughts, your decision making. So when we deal with this aspect of the text, Proverbs 25 verse 28 is saying that if you don't have rule over your spirit, you're like a city that's broken down without any walls. Cities used to build walls to protect themselves from the enemy. So when you are without walls, that means that Satan has every opportunity, every advantage to do what he wants concerning your finances, concerning your physical health, concerning your mental state. Saints, become more serious about your mental state. Stop feeding your stuff, yourself stuff that's demonic mentally. Be, become more vigilant and sober about your mental state. Take times to think about what are you really thinking about? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Think about 
What am I really thinking about in my mind? What am I contemplating? Take the time to think about what you're thinking about. Is it from God? Is it from the Lord? And, and you have to take care of your soul because when you're taking care of your mind, now the Lord knows that you're ready for stewardship over much, being a ruler over much money, much provision, much finances, much kingdom assignments. If you're broken, you know the Lord can't trust you because the brokenness is going to dictate your productivity. Brokenness, it, 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 it um, influences your activity, your operation, your behavior, your conduct. Your conduct is going to go in the direction of the state of your soul. So if your soul is broken and the enemy has place in your soul, that's how your conduct going to be. That's how you're going to operate. That's how you're going to act. And that's not going to be good. When that satanic operation is going on in your soul, now your body is going to move in the direction, your attitude, your reaction is going to be rooted and grounded in that satanic soul. So be cautious of your soul and take care of your soul. There are some things operating in this world right now that I don't study. Like you don't watch news and stuff like that. Like I don't, I don't do that. I don't study too much of stuff. I guard my soul because it's not profitable for, for what the Holy Spirit is flowing through me to do. You see what I'm saying? And I have to be a steward of the soul that I have. And so I can't let Satan injure that soul. So I have to guard that soul with God consciousness, father consciousness, the great God Jehovah consciousness. See, that's why people lose their faith because they're not taking care of their soul. When you don't take care of your soul, of course you're going to lose faith in God. Of course you're going to lose hope because your soul is hungry. Your soul is thirsty. And when your soul is weak, just the same way if you don't feed your body, your body get weak. When your soul gets weak, now it is a slave to atmospheres, doctrines, news reports, uh, lies of Satan, and corruption and devices that tear you down. You have to be the guardian over your soul because what you're going to do when the Lord gives you $100,000, what you're going to do when the Lord gives you perfect health in your body. Do you know that when you got perfect health, you got the power to do a lot of things? When you sick and you got pain in your body, you feel the restraint. So you actually know that you can't do certain things. Now, that doesn't mean that you're not going to do it because there's so many people in pain and they got so many things wrong with their body, but they still find a way to sin against God. But when you got health, saints, you're looking at a person that got perfect health. I don't got one thing wrong with my body. I don't have pain. I don't get headaches. I don't have sickness. I have never caught the coronavirus once. I've walked in public without mask on. I just follow protocol to keep peace. But I've gone places. I've never caught the coronavirus. If you caught the coronavirus, you overcame it. So praise God, you're a warrior. Don't think for one minute, bless God, I didn't, I, how come he didn't catch it? I caught it. No, guess what? You overcame it. So that means how powerful you are. That was a cross. That was something that the Lord allowed you to walk through so that you could see the power that you carry, the glory that you carry. But I'm just letting you know, I don't have no sickness. I don't have no problem wrong with my body. I don't have no issues. I don't get sick. I hug people that got colds and I never get the cold. Blessed be God. In my lifetime, I have kissed people that had colds and I still didn't get the cold. I praise God for supernatural health and I praise God for this supernatural health. But look what I'm doing with it. I'm using the health for the Lord. Now, you can use this health for many things because the more health you have, the more temptations you could have. I'm not saying that that's always the case, but when your body is healthy, you think about more stuff you can do. Or oh, I'm a run, I'm a jog today. You think about a lot of stuff, but when you're loyal to the spirit, the spirit will start showing you how to be a steward over the perfection that he has given to you. Because sometimes people will get to this level of help that I have 
and they'll start using their body to do all type of stuff that's vanity to God. Like he didn't want them to do that, but they feel energy. They feel strength. See, even though I feel energy and strength, I'm yielded to the Holy Ghost. And I follow the spirit of God. I don't let the spirit of God have to beg me for nothing. And the Lord has blessed me, all the stuff that I have right here. The Lord has blessed me, has given me so much um, uh, favor to enjoy life because he is my life. You see what I'm saying? The Lord gave me abundant life because I realized that the abundant life was the father himself. And I'm his son. And I'm walking in the fullness of what I see my father do. Whatever I see my father say, that's what I say. Whatever I see my father do, that's what I do. See, when God put perfection in your life, it's going to be a great test. Because when you have perfection, you actually have more power to do things. See, saints, I sold my way out of small finances because I had to do a great work for God. I'm doing a great work for God right now. I don't reach millions of souls. I don't reach millions of people because I'm doing a great work work for God consecutively. And I keep on going. I'm diligent. I'm still sowing today. I still sow today. And I, I, I move with seed sowing. I honor the Lord with my finances. I do what the spirit of God tells me to do constantly. And I never put my trust in money. That's, that's how I break trust in money. I keep on sowing it into the gospel. I keep on sowing it into the work of God because that's and, and, and see, I have saturated my soul with the riches anointing because I'm a sower as a leader. So I have people sowing into me all throughout the day. I have people sowing into my life all the time, but I'm always sowing. I'm always sowing. I want some of you all to realize that when you're sowing, you're not losing money. You're unlocking the money that God really has for you. When you're sowing, you're not losing finances. You're not losing provision. You're just unlocking the real provision that God has for you. The seed is not uh, bankruptcy, nor is it financial deficit. The seed is you discovering the hidden riches of secret places. You have hidden riches of secret places. You have riches that God has hid away until you start honoring him with the money that he plants in your hands. And see, the, every, every time God gives you money, he's giving you an opportunity to become fast in the Holy Ghost. Every time God gives you seed, he's actually giving you an anointing of speed. Because when you start realizing that God is putting money in your hand for you to sow it, and God is putting the, the money in your hand for you to sow it, you're actually becoming fast in the spirit because the soul, your soul needs to be upgraded to Holy Ghost speed. Somebody need to write that down. Your soul has to be upgraded to Holy Ghost speed. Every time God put this hundred dollars in your hands, it's an opportunity for you to unlock the God kind of life. It's a door in the spirit and it's a window. Seeds, um, is authority over windows in heaven. Seeds is authority over windows in heaven. So when you sow in seeds into your man of God, into your apostle, into your prophet, you unlock in the portal where God could do anything at any time from anywhere from any, with anybody that's going to benefit you. Seeds communicate to the Lord of your birthright being visible and manifested for your own good pleasure. When you're sowing seeds, you're working your birthright. When you're honoring God with this money, you're working your birthright. And every time you sow, you're telling the spirit, let's do business, let's accomplish the kingdom flow, the kingdom standard, the kingdom condition. You're going to have to learn sowing in these wicked times because this earth is going to experience a great shaking for the next 365 days. 
those of you all, you can't trust in chariots. You can't trust in horses or money. You have to trust in God. And the spirit of the Lord told me that I will deliver my people from all evil as they sow into me, they honor me, and they worship me truly. There is supernatural protection in the seed. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 says, cast your bread upon the waters, give a portion and even uh, say, cast your bread upon the waters for you shall find it after many days. Give a portion of seven, even to eight, for you don't know what evil shall be upon the earth. Seeds prepare you from the, for the evil that's going to be upon the earth. When the, when the, when the world is going through a famine, you're going to go through finances. When the world is going through a wilderness, you're going through wealth. When the world is going through bankruptcy, you're going through blessing. When the world is going through lack, you're going through luxury. The Holy Spirit want to give you a luxurious life. And when you lay down everything for the Lord's sake in this gospel, and you let him teach you how to walk away from sin and iniquity and, and thinking wrong type of thoughts, and he, he can train you how to walk in apostolic dominion, guess what? The Lord going to flood you with finances. He going to flood you with health in your body. He going to flood you with supernatural riches, restoration, restoration and rest. He going to flood you with it. Nobody can stop that. That's, that's the God that you serve. And see, the Lord is rich and the Lord is healthy. So you are an heir of God, Galatians tells you. You're an heir of God. So that means that everything that God is, you are as well. And remember 1 John 4, 17, as he is, so are you in this world. And see, King Jesus is walking on streets of gold. And King Jesus has all power over sickness, disease, and pain. So every single thing in your life has to change the more that King Jesus becomes your focus. Now, the Holy Ghost is going to teach you how to dream Jesus. Dream King Jesus, rather. We won't put some respect on his name. The Holy Ghost is going to teach you how to dream Master Jesus. Dream King Jesus. You're going to start thinking about him in your mind and visualizing him. Uh, when you meditate real strong, the spirit will show you the Lord walking in a robe, walking with crowns on his head. You'll see him high and lifted up. You'll see the majesty of who he is. And the more you're viewing the son of God and looking at him, um, you're, you're going to step into matchless victory, matchless wisdom, matchless wealth, um, incomparable prosperity is going to be great and mighty. You're going to see unusual riches, unusual energy operating in your body and mind because you're, you're steadfast on focusing on the Son of God. The more you study King Jesus, he's going to open you up to his intimate places, the intimate parts of who he is. See, wealth, riches, and health is the intimate parts of King Jesus. He going to bring you into those departments in a great and mighty way. And so Mary Magdalene was wealthy. She was the richest sower in King Jesus's ministry. How was she the richest sower? Because she activated the invisible account. She activated the invisible system of sowing, that invisible power to get wealth, the power to get health. And remember, the Lord healed her of seven devils, which shows you that she needed some physical health and her soul needed some health. So all the stuff that she had went through, it traumatized her soul. It, it damaged her soul. It damaged her body. But the Lord healed her of seven devils. You need to know this when you're sowing into King Jesus. King Jesus is going to take a body of a man on earth. It doesn't matter what people say and say everything what they want to say. They can't stop him. He's God. He's going to take the body of a man on earth and he's going to appear to you in this life. King Jesus is going to show up and manifest himself to you. Let, let me go here real quick. Let me go here real quick. Let, let me talk about this real quick. He's going to manifest himself to you. Let's go to John chapter 14. And Satan don't want you to know about this, 
that the Lord going to manifest to you in this life. And saints, I used to ponder this scripture, but the spirit of the Lord just told me, um, I want you to bring revelation to what I meant when I said I'll manifest myself to you. I want you, I want you to see this, people of God. Because King Jesus is going to take a body on earth and he's going to teach you, he's going to reach you, he's going to preach to you. And you're going to see him in his fullness. And you're, you're going to be able to view the son of God moving on earth. Ain't nobody can stop that. Demons ain't the only ones that's moving on earth with their broke self, with their ugly self. God is the God over the earth. Not over the world. The world is a system that didn't come from God that is activated by sin. But over what? Over the world. Over the earth, rather. God is the ruler over the earth. So he going to take over bodies and he going to use a body to win you to him. Your apostle and a prophet, your apostle is just a cold word. It's disguised. But that's God in that flesh. God in the flesh talking to you. And that's why, that's why you have a way to entertain God now. That's why we do this thing, association and connection, because that's going to be God saying, now connect with me. I'm here. See, God wanted to reach out to Mary Magdalene, but King Jesus was the man right there talking to her. God wanted to deliver Susanna, but God came down in the flesh as King Jesus, as a man. See, the Lord wanted to anoint Miriam and anoint Joshua and anoint, uh, who else? Anoint Caleb and anoint the elders. But God came down as Moses. So the Lord wanted to deliver the children of Israel, but he came down as Moses. The Lord wanted to anoint Elisha, but he came down as Elijah. The Lord wanted to anoint um, uh, Israel and deliver them from uh, the bondage of the prophets of Baal, but he anointed Elijah to do it. So the Lord is constantly coming down in human form and he's here right now. Ain't nobody can stop him either. He's here right now. He's going to constantly do it and he will forever rule and reign on earth to those that are the remnant. See, the Lord always has a remnant of people that will see him, that will know him, that will hear him. And he'll teach you and bring you into his heavenly kingdom. Every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Let's go to John chapter 14, verse 21. He that has my commandments and keep them, it is he that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father and I will love him and I will manifest myself to him. Hallelujah. 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 Um, my ministry called JHM, but it's really Jesus Holmes Ministries. Because Jesus has taken over my ministry. I, 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 I love the spirit of Jesus ruling and reigning on earth. I love it. And see, the more the spirit of Jesus rules and reigns in your life, you're going to step into abundance. You're going to experience riches. You're going to experience the glory of being free from sin, not struggling. And even when you feel like you're about to struggle or you experience a little mental downside, the Lord give you weapons of how to reverse it, how to cast down imagination and high things that exalt itself above the knowledge of God. Now, let's go here. It says that he that has my commandments and keepeth them, it is he that loveth me. So the Lord gonna command you. And when you listen to the commandments, you're showing that you love him. It says that he will be loved of my father and we will come, uh, he shall be loved of my father and I will come and will manifest myself to him. Look, King Jesus said he's going to manifest himself to you. Now, where are you? You in the earth, right? That's where he's going to manifest himself to you. Your body is on earth. That's where he's going to manifest himself to you. The Lord going to come down in a body 
and manifest himself to you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He going to manifest himself to you. And saints, when he manifests himself to you, manifest yourself back to him. Sow into him. Honor him. Respect him. Follow him. Heed him. Submit yourself to him. Please him. When he manifests himself, manifest yourself back to him. See, God manifested himself to Peter. But Peter manifested himself back unto God. He started feeding the sheep in the latter part of his assignment. But we see he walked on water. We, said that, we see that he declared, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. See, Peter was also manifesting himself back to King Jesus, which was God in the flesh which was a man's body, but that was God clothed in that man's body. Now, Hebrews chapter 13, verse eight says that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So he do the same thing. He do the same thing. He do the same thing. He do the same thing yesterday, today, and forever. And he, he has that supernatural functionality. How are you going to sow into God if you can't? How are you going to sow into God if you can't see God? What, you going to throw your money up in the air, put it in a balloon, and ship it to heaven? Think about that. How could I give God my tithes and offerings? He going to send me, he going to send me himself. And, and how is a person that's full of sin, how do they have the capacity to receive my sowing and it be accounted unto God and God is rewarding me with harvesting? No, God going to clothe a body. And, and he going to function on earth and talk to me and preach the word to me and teach me. And I sow into him. That's how I go. See, seed sowing, sowing money, watching the teachings, uh, having loyalty and respect to the teacher is all ways that you entertain the Lord Jesus on earth. That's how you do it. So when Abraham sees Melchizedek, he discerns God. And the Bible says he gave a tenth of everything he had. You notice that, right? He gave a tenth of everything he had. And guess what he did? Did he not bless uh, Melchizedek? Yeah, he blessed Melchizedek because he realized that Melchizedek was God in the flesh. That was, that was Jesus in the flesh for him. He realized this is my deliverer. Now, saints, what if Abraham did not sow that? He would not have been called the father of many nations because he had to activate that with his seed. See, seed sowing, it does not, it does not mean that... Uh, see, the blood being shed does not mean that seed sowing is no longer an activator. Seed sowing will always be an activator as long as the earth remains. There'll be seed time and harvest. But here's the secret. Even after the blood was shed, Ananias and Sapphira still died as a result of them not sowing. Because the Lord put that money in their hands for Peter. You see what I'm saying? So, so Peter was a part of that financial instruction. Saints, remember I just read that he ministered seed to the sower. So seed is ministry. That means that when God gives you seed, its functionality is that money is supposed to worship God. It's supposed to push what God is doing through the body that he's using for you. The man of God that he's using for you, the teacher that he's using for you. So Peter had became Jesus to Ananias. Peter was playing the part of Jesus in Ananias' life. And so the Lord Jesus wanted Ananias to sow into him. And Ananias didn't discern it. And Ananias died, and then his wife died. But see, they didn't realize that 
the money that came right there. That's the seed ministry. Saints, I use Ananias a lot. You know why? I use Ananias. I'm not talking about you, baby. I'm talking about scripture that's in the New Testament. I use Ananias a lot because it shows how serious the Lord is about the seed in the New Testament. So a lot of times people can look and say, um, it does not matter because the blood been shed and everything is paid for. But I'm showing you an example that even after it was paid for, the Lord is still demanding the seed. Now, saints, I have taught that the Lord, he's gentle, right? Which he is gentle. But we see in the Ananias situation that the Lord was demanding the seed. Because when you get to a certain level of knowledge, the spirit wants you to sow out of revelation. Like you're not supposed to be a, a, a weak sower. You see what I'm saying? You're supposed to sow out of revelation and understand this giving anointing. You're not supposed to be somebody that say, I don't understand giving. Like you're supposed to understand the giving anointing. Because you are a mature vessel that's born again. And the spirit of God wants you to master in these simple things. But see, the seed principle is too high for those that's deceptive. Because if you lying and you really don't love God, it's impossible for you to be a sower into God. The seed will test your heart. Sowing goes directly to the soul. So if the soul is lying, it can't sow into the Lord. And sowing actually make the soul offended because the soul is being exposed through the seed. The seed is the gospel revealed to you in its fullness. The seed is the gospel revealed to you in its fullness. When you become a seed sower, you become a harvest reaper. A seed sower, the Lord going to put money in your hands. And he going to give you the power to sow that money. And he going to give you the power to reap that money back multiplied. He uses money because money could easily become your God. He uses money because it is his provision. He uses money because that's his way of testing your heart. He uses money because your money could buy anything that you want. But when you sow it, you're telling the Lord, I'd rather pit my trust in you as my source. And that's why he gives you everything. So the financial test will come if you want to unlock the fullness of God's kingdom. I have done many miracles in my ministry. I'm still doing miracles today. God has given me the power to do miracles and he get all the glory. But I'm an heir of God. I'm a joint heir with Christ Jesus, so I do the same thing that he does. I've done many miracles. I've healed the sick. I've done all those different type of things by the power of the Holy Spirit. King Jesus said, heal the sick. So I listen to King Jesus and I operate as King Jesus, healing the sick. I do all those things, but I could not operate in these things in a pure place without sowing. I have many partners in the earth that sow into me, but I am a sower myself. I sow all the time. I honor God financially. And I never stopped doing it even when the Lord made me big. Even when the Lord made my name great. And the Lord caused, see, some of the people that come to my ministry, I had to sow to get you here. Because you know the devil try to fight you, say, don't listen to him. You look at how I look. The devil say, don't listen to him. You listen to something I say, you don't understand it. Oh, that's not right. Don't listen to him. But I sow for the souls of people. Saints, I sow seeds so that your soul could be delivered by this gospel power, this kingdom power. See, I don't sow just for money. I sow 
for the souls to escape prison so that they could hear the words that I speak that are spirit and life. I do the same thing. So, so my, my sowing has activated some of you all's soul to even follow me. I have sold and broken chains so that the devil would not corrupt you in your connection to me. And then there's some people that fall by the wayside sometimes in my ministry. You know, I've been ministering for years. Sometimes people fall by the wayside and the enemy start fighting them. And, you know, I start sowing seeds to do warfare for their soul. So when I sow my seed and I honor God with my finances and I sow into the gospel, I lift up their soul before the Lord. Let their soul come out. As I honor you, Lord, let a spirit of honor come upon them to honor you with their life, their body. Let them become a vessel of honor. Let them come out of their addictions. See, I do warfare with my seed. My God. See, some of y'all don't really know about that. All you know about doing warfare with prayers. But, but, but there's, there's sowing warfare. See, the seed is a war weapon. When you sow this seed, you going on the altar and you uh, communicating with the father and telling the father, break chains, destroy yokes and set the captive free. Let them come out. Let them see what I see. Let them understand what I understand. See, me as a leader, I don't just pull for partners. As a matter of fact, I have, I'm the only prophet in this generation that has done meetings where I did not call for a seed. Back to back to back to back and fed everybody after the meeting and still multiplied five loaves and two fish. You know why I was able to do that? Because I'm a sower. When you are sower, you don't have to beg people. People will know that you are sower to sow into. See, I'm sower. Because the Father has anointed me to receive seed. Anybody will tell you in my ministry, I don't beg people to become a partner. There's not one person that you see following me that ever had me harass them to become a partner. I don't do that. I'm a sower. I activate sores. So when you start sowing into me, you're going to be activated to the lifestyle I live. I live a royal lifestyle because I honor my God in heaven. He made me a God on earth. I honor my king in heaven. He made me a king on earth. When you are sower, you don't have to beg for harvests. The harvest is already in the seed that you're sowing. Wealth is already in the seed that you're sowing. Prosperity is already in the seed that you're sowing. The spirit just has to break you out of being a sowing virgin. Some of you all are sowing virgins. You, you don't know what sowing is all about because you haven't been broken out yet. God want to pop that spiritual uh, stubbornness that keeps you restrained from sowing. Your whole life is in sowing. How are you going to reap if you don't sow? Saints, we go to the gas station, we sow money to get gas. You go try to get gas and you ain't sow no money. You see how fast they call the cops. <laughs> you, 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 you go, go to Walmart right now and go steal some bananas and run out and see how fast that man come out from the side door that you ain't even know he was there. Blessed be God. How many of y'all ever seen that before? One time I saw a man pop out like a football player and tackle the other man. He ran out. He was trying to run out with, I don't know if he had baby diapers and some, some, some Kool-Aid. He was running out there and knocked, bam, they knocked him over the side of the head and they tackled him. You go try to, you go try to purchase something without finances. Saints, all these things that we do every day, we sow, but how many people actually sow concerning their destiny? 
You sow for food, you sow for gas, you sow for clothes, but people don't think about sowing for their inheritance. When you going to sow for your inheritance? You got to get out of that mindset of, Lord, give me, give me this, give me this. You ain't got to tell the Lord to give you nothing. The Lord going to minister seed to you. Your job is to minister the seed to him. He put money in your hand for you to sow it. Your job is not to stress about the harvest. God minister the seed to you and then give you the power to activate harvest yourself. Imagine that every good event is in a seed that you're going to sow. All of your joy is in a seed that you're going to sow. All of your peace is in a seed you're going to sow. All favor is in a seed you're going to sow. All your happiness is in a seed you're going to sow. All of your health is in a seed you're going to sow. Think about that. All your prosperity is in a seed you're going to sow. All uh, uh, of, of, of your protection is in a seed you're going to sow. See, the Lord made you an activator of the kingdom. So sometimes you waited on God to do something that he promised you and he waited on you to do something that you promised him. You told him that you surrendered all. So when you going to become a soul? You told him that you love him with all your heart. You promised him that you was going to obey him. You promised him that wherever he leads you, you was going to follow. You promised that you was going to listen to him. So then, see, God can't fulfill his promises until you fulfill your promises to him. He can't fulfill his promises to you until you fulfill your promises to him. A lot of times you tell the Lord that you'll do whatever he, he, he wants from you. Well, he wants you to sow. He wants you to honor him. The seed is the pleasure of God. I found that out years ago when I was a teenager, over a decade ago. As a matter of fact, over 20 years ago, I was sowing as a little boy. But over a decade ago, I took it up to the next notch. Above the heavens sowing, glory sowing, out of this world sowing, kingdom sowing. Where I started taking money and sowing it higher. I started honoring the Lord and taking it higher. I started reaping harvest after harvest. And see, the powerful thing about it is that a lot, of, a lot of the people in my ministry that flow with me via the spirit, they sow just like me. So I could sow a certain amount. And then somebody in my ministry will sow the same amount without me saying anything to them. Because telepathically, they got my same spirit. When you sowing into an apostle and prophet, you take on their same mentality, their same soul, their same spirit. You start operating in the blessing. How could you operate in the blessing of God without sowing? Adam was blessed, but God gave him the power to sow. So how are you going to say you blessed and highly favored? Highly favored mean that you got high access to God. That's what favor is. Favor is access. So how are you going to say that I'm highly favored and you don't know about sowing? You got access to God in a high dimension. But you don't sow. You don't know that the seed is the apple of his eye. The seed make God feel happy. The seed make God feel appreciated. The seed is pleasurable to King Jesus. The harvest is pleasurable to you. But see, the more you surrender your life and you become honorable, even the seed is honorable. It is pleasurable to you. When you sow, you feel good because you realize that it's making God feel good and you want to impress God with your seed. Solomon did not need nobody to beg him to sow. He sold large seed into God, a thousand burnt offering, without anybody pressuring him to give. Because that's sowing out of grace. 
When you sow out of law, it becomes too hard. It becomes a competition. And, and Satan start corrupting that weapon of sowing in your life. Satan start trying to pit his own input and mess up the joy of giving. Don't rob God of cheerful giving. When you are a giver, give cheerfully. Don't give fearfully. When you give fearfully, you still robbing God because fear does not produce what the Lord is looking for in your seed sowing. Fear is still locks up the seed the way it's supposed to be sown. You cannot sow correctly if you're in fear because fear going to give you its own instructions, its own limitations and own limits. You have to get a revelation that he's the Lord of the harvest. He's the Lord of the harvest. The Lord is the Lord of the harvest. So the Lord is actually, he's the harvest giving God. Once you get a revelation of harvest, you're going to get a revelation of seed. You can't sow until you realize that the Lord is the Lord of the harvest. That the Lord actually has a ministry of showing himself strong to give you harvests. Until you realize that the spirit has a ministry of showing himself strong to you to give you abundance. Saints, the harvest power of God makes sowing easy. Because the truth of the matter is the reason why people don't sow a lot of times, they think that once they're sowing money, that that's all that they're going to have is what's left. They don't understand the seed being sown. It's going into the heavenly account. The riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And all the Lord does is looses what's in heaven to you on earth. So a lot of people don't sow because they lack understanding. They think, okay, if I give money, now I'm left with the money that I have and that's not enough. No, no, no. Sowing means that I'm taking what I have so God could give me what he has. And God don't have a limitation. The Lord doesn't have poverty. The Lord does not have budgets. The Lord does not have restrictions and riches. The Lord is rich. In my father's house are many mansions. So when you sow on the earth into your prophet, your apostle, your teacher, the gospel, you're sowing into another world and that other world overtake you. Remember what Deuteronomy chapter 28 uh, verse one and two said that these blessings shall overtake you. These blessings shall overtake you. Saints, when you going to let the blessings overtake you, huh? You going to wait to go to heaven when heaven is waiting to come to earth? Huh? Huh? You going to wait for eternal life to, for you to leave your body to receive all the stuff that God scheduled for you in your body? Saints, the hundredfold return, King Jesus talked about that. That's not for heaven alone. That's for earth. King Jesus said that you're going to receive houses and lands on earth. You imagine somebody, imagine how Imagine how ignorant you have to become to denounce that King Jesus said that you're going to have a hundredfold in this life. Imagine how crazy you have to become for you to reject it and say that's not so. King Jesus said it. Are you serving Jesus? You love Jesus, right? Well, that's what Jesus said out of his mouth. So if King Jesus said it, there's a path for you to get it is in the seed, is in sowing. Let's, let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 2. Let's go to verse, um, 1 Samuel chapter 2. Let's go to verse uh, 7. It says, the Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and he lifteth up. Let's go to verse 8. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 8. It says, he raiseth up the poor out of the dust. 
He raiseth up the poor out of the dust and he lifteth up the beggar. He lift up the beggar from the dunghill. You know what the dunghill is all about? That's some ish. That's some crap. That means that the Lord didn't create you to be in no mess of lack, no mess of poverty, no mess of, of not enough. That's mess to God. It says that he lifted up the beggar. How many of y'all feel that you're a beggar? The Bible said that the Lord came to lift you up out of begging. Why are you not begging no more? Because wealth cometh. Money cometh. Why, 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 why are you no longer begging? Because what you was begging for is now in your possession. You done unlocked it. You done listened to the kingdom. And now it's in your possession. Think about that. Saints, this in your Bible. This in your Bible. You can't deny this. You can, you can, you can say what you want. You can't deny what the word of God said. It says that he lifted up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes. You know why he set you among princes? Because princes have a financial uh, overflow in their life. Princes are dominators over wealth and make them inherit the throne of glory. The throne, the throne of glory is the throne of gold. Every sower must know that there's a throne of glory for you where wealth is, riches is, prosperity is, abundance is, overflow is. There's an overflow of what we call the, the throne of glory. Now, saints, we hear about the throne of grace to ask God for help in the time of need, but you hardly hear about the throne of glory. I never heard about no throne of glory like that. The throne of glory is a place where the spirit is taking you out of small finances. The throne of glory is the Lord saying multimillionaire status is even too small for you because you have so much that I'm gonna have you do on earth. So I'm gonna get you to the millions. I'm gonna let you get to the millions. I'm gonna show you how to do. You ain't gotta be anxious. You ain't gotta scheme. You don't have to worry about how it's gonna happen. See, the seed is your job. The harvest is God's job. It's God that give the increase. So you don't have to worry about all that other stuff. You just sow the seed. You just listen to God with the money, the seed that he give you. He going to get you there. That's his work. Look what he do. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust. You know why the poor? Because he's sowing. The poor man is sowing. Because the poor man has received the kingdom. Now you understand why the Bible say, blessed are the poor. In spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now you understand why I said that. Because the poor man decided to move in the kingdom of heaven to sow his way out. Remember the woman had the two mites? But she used the spirit of might to sow. That's what she did. She had two mites, but she used the spirit of might to give. What did King Jesus say? She has given all that she had. Why did King Jesus magnify that? Because that's what the Lord be looking at. Who going to sow their way out in the earth? Who going to listen to the father with their finances, with their money? Don't just talk about it. You got to be about this lifestyle. And look, King Jesus started uh, uh, magnifying the fact that this woman was sowing. If sowing got King Jesus' attention, why you haven't used sowing to get his attention? Saints, I'm not a hypocrite of this. I just sold, I sold over a thousand dollars today. I sold every day. So I'm not a hypocrite of this. Like some of you all might look at me talking about, oh, he just wants somebody to sow into him. Baby, I am soul. I, I, don't, I don't have to take nothing from you. I am a supply system. God told Abraham, I'll bless those that bless you. I'll bless those that bless you. You know what that means? If somebody bless you, I'm going to bless them because they bless you. That's what God said. See, I am a, 
I'm pioneering the blessing of Abraham right now. I'm pioneering the blessing of Abraham right now. And the blessing of Abraham makes you very rich. 